Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Hawkeye. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, I didn't bring this up last episode because I didn't even really, it didn't correlate in my head, but luckily, well, the episodes pick up right where the previous episodes evolve, that... I didn't realize that Jack was literally using uh, Clint's own sword against him in that moment. And granted, like, Kate wasn't in a room to see that because if she did, she probably would have been like, whoa. Okay. Like, knowing specifically he had that sword because she was there at the auction, so she knows it was there. Uh, cause she, but she doesn't know he picked it up. But also, like, she, she was so caught up with everything later on that she didn't notice it in the corner. Clint did, though, but... Nevertheless, I did like just the awkward situation of her like, you know, Kate showing up, whoa, 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 Jack, stop. And then here comes uh, Eleanor being like, wait, wait, why is an Avenger in my house? And Jack's like, oh, I, you, you, you're, you're Archer. And Kate's like, Hawkeye. And he's like, Clint. And she's like, see, I told you branding issues. She's like, yeah, sure. And so we have this awkward sit down of like, okay, so why is my daughter with you? It's like, yeah, uh, we're working together. We're not working together. We're, we're pretty much partners. We're not partners. <laughs> um. But it's like, wait, so my daughter's helping you with, like, an Avengers-level threat? It's like, no, just, and there's some, yes, yes, pretty much. And I'm like, oh, that's super sweet. And Kate's almost kind of like, thanks for having my pet, bat, partner. And so it's just, like, this interesting um, back and forth, that, that, that whole scene I really love. Um, just, like, the awkwardness of it. Like, you know, it's like, it's a situation Hawkeye's never found, like, Clint's never found himself in. But like I said, he notices the sword, and he makes sure to grab it. It's like, yeah, probably a little indicative of the fact is that you have this very specific sword. But um, him and Eleanor have a very interesting conversation as she le as they leave. So, for her, it's, hey, um, you do have kids? And he's like, she's like, I'm just going to assume that you do. The fact of the matter is, my daughter is my war. I've already lost enough. I don't want. And, he, and he's like, he's not fighting girl. He's like, nope. I completely understand. Okay. Um, it's just that she's helping me out and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, you know. And I love that line of her being like, "So you're gonna drop this case?" And he's like, "No, but I'm gonna ensure that your daughter's safe." Now, those words specifically, like, oh, like, it's one thing, like, she's like, yeah, I love my daughter, and I just, I want to make sure she's okay, she's my world, but also, you're going to drop this case, right? The fact is that she said that, it's like, oh, so yeah, you ha definitely have your own involvement in this, whether Kate just is too blind to see it or not, but it's like, yeah, you definitely have your own involvement, because you want him to drop, like, that kind of, that was kind of distinguished to that conversation, like, well, drop, you're dropping the case, right? I love that uh, Clint ends up calling, um, well, texting Laura to look into uh, Sloane uh, for him. Because uh, we also see, like I said, he snuck out with uh, the sword. And I think it's really interesting when he does end up talking to uh, Laura later on. That still continues to be the conversation of, like, how much in the know is she about everything? Because I guess, like, you know, he was, I mean, I guess with their marriage and everything, he tells her everything, the good and the bad. Because the question has been, like, well, how much, like, it seems like she knows about Ronan. Because she's like, yeah, you and, yeah, we thought that outfit of yours was gone. Because I guess it was in the Avengers, like, amongst the Avengers stuff that you thought, like, probably got destroyed and stuff like that. You didn't expect it out about your past to literally be out and about in the world, kind of, like, showing up in front of you like that again. Even the fact is that Laura speaks a different language just to hide from the kids, but like, but like the door, their daughter's like, it's dad, because it's like, yeah, the only reason why mom would be speaking like that is because it's dad, and she doesn't want us uh, per pervy to like whatever conversation, privy is uh, privy to any conversation that they're having, and um, I just like I said, I thought that was so interesting of like, oh, like you know, it's like oh the Rolex, and she's like. Because she knows about the like the watch, too. And I'm like, oh, I thought that was... And he's like, yeah, me too. But, like, the fact is that she, like... It's just so interesting knowing, like, oh, yeah, like, your part... Like, you guys are in this together, like, through and through that you... Because uh, they never really showcased that anytime she's ever popped up before. I mean, to be fair, the only other time she's really been on... Like, his family situation's been, like, focused on was... The beginning of Endgame a tiny bit, but also like Age of Ultron, like the first introduction to it, but also like the lengthier time we've spent with it. But it's never been like 
really like we've never gotten the ins and outs of their dynamic until now of like oh she knows a lot more than you would think she would you know but it's like I guess it's like right we're married like so either she went into this knowing exactly who Clint was and what he was all about there might be something more to that as the season progresses but I think that was kind of interesting and obviously, like, you know, it's like, right, uh, dad says he's going to, you know, work is busy, so he's going to be another day. And all his kids are, you know, disappointed. It's just kind of like, you know, it's he's still hoping that he'll make it home in time because he's like, yeah, I got to help this kid out of this situation that she's in. Especially because he's like, yeah, she's in this predicament because of me. Like, if I'd never become a Ronin, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We wouldn't be under these circumstances, so. But what I thought was so interesting is Kate... And her, like, you know, hanging out with Jack and, um, Eleanor. That the fact is that she's suspicious of Jack, but it's not until that moment where she's talking to, uh, listening to Eleanor and Jack go back and forth. And she sees how happy her mom is. She's like, I haven't seen you smile like that in a long time. So she has her suspicions of Jack, but what complicates things is like, right, but my mom is happy. You know, it's like, I've been so caught up in my own feeling the way I have been. I haven't taken time to consider how my mom feels. Granted, we, you know, me personally, I'm like, oh, I think your mom's a villain, so I'm not too concerned about her feelings. But, you know, for you, it's like, you're my mom and you're, you're happy. And I, I don't want, I, I, I you know, despite everything, it's like you like you probably she hasn't seen her mom like that since her dad, and probably even then there were complications. So, she, you know, she's she's actually legitimately happy for her um, mom, even joining in on the bit about like right, like um, those phrases. He always gets them wrong, like absence makes the heart grow older, and she's like, oh, you make my heart grow older, you know, like joking like that. But it made her co kind of realize like right, I've, you know, I'm, I'm never taking time to think about how my mom feels. Um, but granted, later on meeting up with Clint, she finds out, yeah, uh, Jack's actually the CEO of Sloan. So, like, he is definitely in the mix of all of this with the tracksuit mafias. Because Kazi's an employee there, but Jack is the CEO of it, so. And you see that look on her face when she finds out, because she, like, she was right about Jack, so there's a part of her that's happy, but also now it's like, damn, because that means I'm going to end up breaking my mom's heart when I have to, like, take him down. Like, it's like, well, we're going to have to find a way to take him down. And it's like, yeah, because, um... It's like she knows how happy he makes her mom. So I thought um, I'd also skipped over it too. Eleanor did have a, a phone call after Clint left hinting to like, oh, yeah. Like, so you're like, we're talking. You'd assume it has to be a Wilson Fisk type of situation. If the person is who we all think it is, because literally everyone's like, that's got to be Kingpin, right? You know, but so. They're definitely, like, I guess she was calling him to be like, yeah, things are kind of, uh, call me back, some urgent's kind of come up. Not unless there's someone else, but I'm, I'm assuming it, it is solely Kingpin. Um, but I do like just Hawkeye, little Clint's, like, low-grade taking care of himself. He's getting stuff out of the freezer, frozen, putting it on, like, his arm, his knee, and then, like, laying it down, and, but then Kate shows up. Um... And I think that was a beautiful thing of like, right, try to get you home for Christmas. But till then, you know, we could celebrate like movie marathon and everything. He's like, thanks. I, I really appreciate it, kid. I was like, I, I like I said, I like a lot of their dynamic. It is almost like this. There's almost like this sibling, sibling um, aspect. There's like a familiar aspect to like the way he kind of treats her like he would his own kid. But also it's like, yeah, you are my partner. Like, you know, it's he hasn't had a partner in a long time. The last partner he had was Natasha. So... You know, for him, I think it, I think that ends up complicating things. He is opening his heart up to be like, yeah, like working with someone again. Like, it, you know, being part of the Avengers, but ever since like Endgame, like everyone kind of went in their separate ways. But for him, it's like you know, him and Natasha, like it isn't just Avengers related stuff, like S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff, like they had history. So they were partners like well before like the Avengers situation. So like, and even then, I, I don't know if he's really tight with the other Avengers. Like, he, there's no way he has a, the same dynamic or relationship he has with any other um, Avenger that that's similar to his uh, relationship with Natasha. Um, but obviously, it's like, you know, the festive spirits and stuff like that. And um, I love that she's planning it all out. Like, right. And he's like, you, is that a dry, erasable marker? And she's like, and she tries wiping it away and it doesn't work. So she puts up a tree. See, it covers up all the stuff I wrote up there because it's about uh, taking down, well, get, you know, taking down Jack also, um, and also uh, the tracksuit mafia, TSM for short. 
but like I said, they have these moments, and he like, she's like, oh, like we learned a lot of interesting things about like uh, Clint's situation about his arrows. I thought was fascinating because obviously there's that whole Archer conversation about like, okay, so like, how many arrows do you actually have? It's like, oh, can we we need to get more trick arrows. He's like, there's not, there's no more trick arrows, and she's like wait, in the world? He's like, I have a few trick arrow heads, but they have to use a very, they use a very specific arrow shaft. So it's like, oh, we're going to have to retrieve them. I'm like, that's interesting. So that means most circumstances, like Clint probably uses, that's why he probably doesn't use his trick arrows much. Cause they're like, yeah, cause if I use them, I'm going to have to get the arrow back because if I want to use a similar trick arrow head, I'm, cause it can only use very specific. I was like, that's fascinating. Regular arrows, they're a dime a dozen, but trick arrows, I need very specific arrow shafts to use. And I'm like, that's so anytime he's ever has used one, it's like, right, we're going to have to go pick those up. Like, you know, I love that thing of that. That's so fascinating. Cause like I said, it didn't, it's not indicative of every arrow, just the trick arrows. I think that's so fascinating. Cause I'm trying to think like he doesn't use too many trick arrows in the MCU. Like this is the first time they've really showcased it. I think he's used a few, but to, to my recollection, it's mainly normal arrows. But now it's like for that purpose, it's like yeah, he's on a budget too. You know, I mean, who knows if they're like specially? They're probably specially crafted and customized, and it's probably impossible to get them. And even if it wasn't like on such short notice, it'd be impossible to get them. So I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. Um, she wants him to uh, teach her some things. Like he's like, oh, like you know, teach me like some of your fighting moves or whatever. And it's like, oh, um, and he's like, oh yeah, I could take this and I can knock someone unconscious. And she's like, what? No, you can't. He's like, yeah, like there's 20 different ways I can knock someone unconscious with this. He's like, not with a dime. It's too light. And she's like, no way. And it's like, she's like, go ahead, no, go ahead, don't show me. And I'll go around telling everyone that Hawkeye's full of bullshit. Snaps his finger with the coin, it ricochets and turns off the TV. She's like, whoa, teach me that. And so he's doing that and he's teaching her and she actually nails it after a few tries. And he's like, whoa, great job, kid. Um, but obviously it's like, oh yeah, what's the greatest shot you've ever taken? And for him, it's like the greatest shot was the one he didn't take. And she's like, no, like tell me that he's like, he doesn't want to. But for him, it's like he was ordered to take someone out. But when he saw her, Natasha, he uh he couldn't because he saw that she wanted out of her circumstances. So and obviously she became his best friend, his partner in all of this. And I love that line of um the line of that's, you know, that's the whole aspect of this whole superhero thing. Because he even had the same conversation with Eleanor about losing people. He's like, yeah, it's all about mitigating your loss. It's all about managing your losses, right? And he kind of has to, like, like he, he kind of does, like, a sad chuckle, like, <laughs> like, and I was like, that's a heartbreaking line of, like, yeah, you have to manage loss in my line of work because the fact is you can and potentially will lose people under those circumstances, you know? Uh, because even uh, Eleanor said, like, oh, like, no matter how good you are, like, Natasha Romanoff was good, but sometimes, no matter how good you are, it's still not enough. Um, and Kate references, like, oh, like, his relationship, like, oh, is that how you know, um, Ronan? How, well, how do you, like, how, is that how you, like, under these circumstances, is that how you met Ronan? And he doesn't say anything, and she's like... You are Ronan, aren't you? And for him, it's just like... Because she had um, talked about... Um, yeah, like, you lost your family in the blip, didn't you? And he was like, yeah. And then she's like, yeah, it was hard on every everyone. But the moment the Ronan stuff came up, he was like... Everyone handled the uh, blip in their own way. And obviously, he regrets it. And I thought that conversation was really great. In the her, you know, trying to tell him he's a hero. But he keeps being like, no, I'm not. Like, the fact of the matter is, I did what I did, and obviously he has so many regrets about it. Um, because for him, it's... What was the exact wording? Essentially, he said he basically did what he was uh, trained to do. And she was like, oh, protect people. He's like, no, hurt people. She's like, no, but you're a hero. He was like, no, I'm a weapon. Like, I just had someone pointing me in the right direction at the right target. And I think that's so, and I think that's what led to him and Natasha hitting it off because they both view themselves as that. That we were, they were both assassins. We're both killers. You know, it's like they both had regrets about, you know, um, 
everything they've ever done. It's like, despite everything, it's like, I am a killer. I'm a, they were both manufactured. They were, you know, different circumstances, but they were both like, we were, we are both weapons. And for him, it's like, I just basically did what my train, like did what I did as a weapon. Now I, I just, instead of being pointed at the right targets, I went after everybody. You know, that's why, once again, it's solidifying. Like, I'm not a role model. I'm not someone to look up to. I'm a bad guy. I've killed people, you know? And just for him, that's why he wants to end all this so he can get, you know, for him, it's like, that's why I have to end this Ronin stuff because it's not, because it's like, well, you know, it's in in your past. He's like, no, it's forever going to be tied to me. It's going to, and in turn, be tied to my family. And that's why he needs to end this because he doesn't want the blowback to the Ronin stuff to ever come back to his family. Because it's like, for him, it's like, I can't escape what I've done, you know, and then he kind of would, like, they go, like, they say goodnight to each other, and he lays there, and he thinks about everything he did as Ronan, and even Natasha telling him, like, hey, uh, you don't have to, um, killing all those people won't bring your family back, and then thinking about Natasha's sacrifice, because for him, it's just like, once again, the PTSD, the guilt of, I should be the one that's dead, like, Natasha, like, she stayed true to her path. Like, the moment she put the Black Widow stuff behind and became an Avenger, she stuck to it. I lost my family. What did I do? I went on a killing spree. Like, that's why I was like, I'm, 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 I'm the one that needed to die, not Natasha, because she was changing. Like, yes, she, we even, you know, the conversation between her and Yelena and, uh, Black Widow of like, oh, like, you're, you're no real role model, and Clint has that same perspective. I'm like, right, I've killed people. Like, I'm not a good person. I can't escape my past as Ronan. So. But obviously, it's a divide and conquer situation. He ends up um, going to visit Kazi while uh, Kate's going to talk to the LARPers. And I love that she's like, wait, the LARPers? He's like, yeah, no. And he's like, no, they're good people. Like, you, you, you really like them. You, you hit it off with them. And so. And she's like, right, can we start referring to them as our arrows? She's like, fine, get our arrows back. And so she shows up at the LARPers and they're doing the thing. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's like, oh, which one of you the cop? She's like, oh, I am. It's like, okay, so, you know, nothing too big. Just run into mill, you know, police evidence tampering. You know, because uh, Hawkeye needs his arrows back. And they're like, oh, cool, cool, cool. We'll help you out. But we kind of want something in exchange and like. She's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, you know, oh, yeah, I'm working with Hawkeye, you know, uh, you know, on Avenger level, Mitch. I mean, you know, we're partners. I mean, we're, I'm pretty much his best friend. I'm like, it, it reminds me of what if with the whole um, Jamon Hansu's uh, character, uh, how he's like, he's pretty much the same way about Star-Lord T'Challa. It's like, oh, yeah, like Star-Lord T'Challa, like my best, Star-Lord's my best friend. It's kind of that, it gives, it gives me those same vibes. And just like, oh yeah, like everyone kind of dapping her up. And the moment Clint actually gets back to the house after he visits um, Kazi, which I love that thing of like, is like, oh, like, yo, you're looking for your gun? Got that. Later on, he's looking for the knife? Got that. All the thing under the seat? Got that too. But he's like, yeah, um, the person you working for, we both know they don't like all this attention. And Maya's coming after, like, she's chasing a ghost with this whole Ronin thing. So, we, I figure you out of anyone has her ear, you need to get her to back down and stop. And he's like, oh, like, what? Because you know that you're, the person you're working for isn't going to be too happy about all this attention. And that could be bad for Maya. Like, at the end of the day, Maya will die if she keeps pursuing this. It will get her killed or, like, her, binge, her need for revenge. Because for him, too, it's it's a situation of, like, he's not trying to get himself off the hook by doing it. It's But it's also, like, because, like, if I, if this Ronin stuff keeps going on, it is only a matter of time before it finds its way back to my family, and they'll suffer for it. So that's why I got to nip this in the bud now. He's like, I don't want anyone else to die. I I have to live with all the death I cause, but I don't want that to be the end-all be-all for Maya, that her that her need for revenge will ultimately get her killed, so he's trying to appease Sakazi because he's like, yeah, you're not, you know, you seem at least smarter than the others. I mean, he's like, I mean, at the end of the day, you're a doormat. So, I don't love Sakazi being like, yo, can I get my gun back? And he's like, yeah, what do you think? And then he tosses the gun, like, as he leaves the car, and I love that. But uh, when he gets back, the LARPers are there, and um, it's like, hey, and Clint's like, 
what are they doing here? And it's like, oh, hey. And they're like, oh, hey. And then, like, I love Kate being like, oh, man, this actually looks uh, pretty dope. And the lady's like, oh, yeah, I made it myself. She's like, really? And it's like, yeah. And it's like, oh, can we get you guys to make our, maybe get us to make costumes? And girls will say, oh, maybe that's what we can actually, maybe, you know, for in return for the arrows, maybe that's what we could do. Like, hook you up with some costumes and stuff like that. Which I'm like, oh, that's pretty dope. Because it kind of reminds me a little bit of a... Um, daredevil in that regard of like yeah like the suit maker for uh for matt in, in that a similar thing granted this is a very like l low grade version of like oh yeah let's i mean you know obviously some recent suit upgrades uh which i think is such an interesting comparison where like sam got like the wakanda treatment um whereas uh Hawkeye's getting like the low grade larper like you know the larpers are helping him out which i love but i also love that um the cop, she comes back with the arrows and everything in the bag, and it's like, okay, cool. And he's trying to take the bag, and she's like, no, no, my wife got this for me. She embroidered it and everything, like, what say, like, bombshell or something like that? And it's like, because she's like, oh, did you not bring your own bag? He's like, oh, no. But Kate's like, no, I promise. He'll, he'll bring it back. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it back. I promise. And it's just like, and just him pulling the bag from her, but her still not letting go. I'm like, that's actually sweet, knowing that there's a sentimental value to the bag. So... But I love it's just like, yeah, we got just, like, random people just, like, sh like out and about in what is kind of our secret base. I just, I, I love it. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, they're, they're soaking out the situation because um, Clint is after the watch because he got a signal from it. And uh, he's like skulking the place out. She's like, we should be at a higher position. He's like, no. And she's like, yeah, we should. That's why I said it. He's like, no. Basically, the more important thing isn't how you get a quick entrance. It's more about your quick exit. So he's like, right. This position, I've chosen it because this way we can quickly get, like, I'm, I've got all my exits figured out. Which I'm like, oh, that's pretty impressive. But then by the time he turns around, Kate's already gone. And she finds a, like, more direct route in. She just takes the front door and at, offers a guy help with his groceries. And she's talking to guys like, are you talking to me? She's like, no, I wasn't talking to you. But she's like, actually, I was talking to an Avenger. Uh, he, he, he's talking to me right now in my ear. And the guy's like, no, 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 you don't have to help me. I'll get these back. She's like, no, are you sure? I can't help you. He's like, no, I'm good. She, she sounds so crazy and it's like oh, good day and I'm like I love it also the conversation about like what do you do about this big bow and everything he's like well I have a collapse on one she's like yeah that, that makes a lot of sense that 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 is pretty convenient but it breaks into the apartment um and does find the watch there were like sensors that like strobing lights and even that first I was like what would that be for and I was like oh right it, it still didn't correlate in my head immediately but it, you know she got the watch, but she found a list about Clint's family, and you're like, wait, like, how did, I wonder how did, well, she has connections. Well, I was like, not unless Eleanor helped out in that regard, because of Bishop Security, you do have info on a lot of people, so maybe there's info even there about Clint and his family, but it's like, Maya, they end up finding out it's Maya's apartment, and that she has a list, but, um, Kate and Maya go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, which is like, no, I'm fighting Maya, I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, there a twin situation going on? And someone's in a suit, and I was like, wait, who the, I was like, mm, is it? I was like, yep, 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 I was like, yo! I wasn't expecting her to pop up under these circumstances, like, of course you'd show up with your face hidden, I love that. I mean, you're, 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 I mean, it fits your style, like, you are, you're, you are a Black Widow, so, like, of course you're gonna go covert, um, but while Kate's doing the whole thing against, um, Maya, Clint, like, sends out the, um, line, um, zip line, and I love that she tries to, like, get across, but stops, like, halfway through, but luckily, during the fight, uh, Yelena ended up, like, bending it down, so she was able to keep her momentum, eventually pick her momentum back up to slide all the way down, um, uh, but I'm like, I love that, like, Yelena kind of, like, jumped up and, like, knocked her down. I'm like, that was, like, like the switch off between the fights is nuts. Um, Maya making her way over to the gun, which was pretty dope. Like, Kate kind of sliding over and, like, knocking it away. Uh, kind of using that same uh, tactic about kind of implementing the coin thing pretty quickly on. I think that's kind of what that was supposed to uh, be. Um... But just, like, the exchanging of, like, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with everyone. And I love that it's kind of a free-for-all because, like, Maya and Elena end up duking it out at certain points. Because, like, no, get out of my way. I don't know who you are. No talking in that conversation. Because neither one of them is talking. It's just, like, get out of my way. I'm trying to kill them. No, I'm trying to kill them type of thing. So, I did like uh, the moment where, like, and I think Elena definitely did it on purpose is when she knocked 
Kate off the side of the roof like she'd activated the um, zip line thing to like catch her and in that moment Clint stops because it just it makes him think of Natasha and she's like he's like, she's like pull me up and he was just like no just get out of here because he's like right like he knows what's going on here and he's like I don't want you to mix up in this like this is a little too close for comfort it was just it his PTSD kicked in that moment that's why he stopped and froze you know he's like right and he cut the line she fell uh, but, like, she immediately got up, found her way back to the rooftop anyway. Maya ended up running off partway through the fight, but then you had, um, Yelena's mask removed, and in that moment, Kate had to arrow point at her, and Yelena kind of looked at her and kind of shook her head no, and she made her exit. Which, for Clint, I'm curious, does he know, know who Yelena is? Because he recognizes her as a black... He's like, you don't want to know who she is. I was like, oh, do you? And it's like, he just refers to her as a black widow assassin. So I think for him... I think it's almost poetic in certain regards. Uh, I find it funny because he told Maya that Ronan was killed by Black Widow. Now a Black Widow is coming to kill him. So it's just, it is funny how that all works out. But I don't know if he knows that that's Yelena. Because that might not have been, like, even despite the closeness, there might have been aspects that even Natasha didn't tell him about. Or maybe he does know that that's... Or because I don't know if he got a good look at her face. Like, because he was busy being electrocuted. Because she, I guess, um, Valentina hooked her up with all the tech. Not unless it's just, like, natural stuff she had as a Black Widow. Um, but I'm assuming those were the perks of, like, them um, working together and stuff. But, um... For him, it's like, it got too real. Like, the track suits was one thing. This is low-grade enough that it's like, despite the bad people involved, it was nice having someone have his back. But having, like, a Black Widow come after him after almost seeing Kate fall like that, it's just, it was too much. It's like, no, we're ending this. We, we're not partners. We never were. She's like, no, no, we can do this together. He's just like, go home. Like, I'm not going to be, like, he's like, I can't, I can't be responsible for another person's death. I need you to go home. I w I'll handle this alone, you know, and, and it's sad, but it's like, because I, yeah, they were bonding. They were hitting it off as partners that he was kind of slowly being like, yeah, yeah, I am going to, um, I am kind of, uh, yeah, we are kind of partners then, you know, obviously like she has been able to hold herself back as a fan, you know, like fanning out, being like, yo, it's Hawkeye, you know, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but also, um, he even said it like her inability to act like a grown up sometimes, and it's like you know, and she's like, yeah, but it is what it is. But in that moment, it's just like, I, like I said, I'm curious like if he knows who Yelena is specifically. So, if not, he probably just assumes like, right, there's a number of people that want me dead. Um, either he didn't really go into the ins and outs of it because like because it is Natasha stuff. So it's gonna be interesting to find out whether or not he knows her relationship to Natasha, besides just being a Black Widow. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, because um, did Natasha ever bring up her family knowing about Clint? Um, you would do you think it was a two-way street, or maybe because of her circumstances she never said anything? We'll, we'll have to find out what he knows, but it is kind of sad to see their partnership kind of dissolve like this, but like I said, it got too real in that moment, and he's just, he's scared of like, yeah, like, because he wouldn't want his own kids under these circumstances, and he made a promise to Eleanor, like, yeah, make sure your daughter's safe, and the whole conversation of like, being good is one thing, but being good, being good isn't enough sometimes, and this is one of those cases where it's like, not being good wasn't enough, isn't enough, so, and wasn't enough when it came to Natasha, so, um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with this. Only two episodes left, so it's going to be fascinating to see what happens. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.